Ladies and gentlemen, please can all guests ensure mobile phones are on silent. Due to medical reasons, no flash photography is permitted throughout the ceremony. Thank you for your support.
Ladies and gentlemen, please be upstanding for the platform party. Gentlemen, please be seated. Please welcome Charlie Dean, Principal and Chief Executive of Berry College. Thank you. Deputy Mayor, Honoured guests, but most importantly, our graduates, welcome to the Berry College 2021 graduation ceremony. Of course, we are here to celebrate your achievements accomplished in the recent past. But I want to talk very briefly about your future, your future at work, your future career, your next promotion. Now imagine, if you will, in front of you, a square split into four smaller squares. In the top right hand box, box are all the tasks in your work you love. You love these things because you're good at them. You get status from these things because you are good at them. They make you successful. People pat you on the back and say, good job, well done. You're great at this stuff. You get immense satisfaction from completing these tasks because you are good at them. And so you spend more and more time in this box in the warm glow of success and potential greatness, regardless of its relationship to the actual aims of your job. But lurking in the bottom left-hand box are all the tasks you hate. You hate them, quite frankly, because you are not very good at them. You have, may have failed at these things. You even define yourself as not very good at these tasks. And maybe you have even been admonished by your boss for failures at these tasks at some point. So you avoid them. You avoid these tasks because you are not very good at them and you avoid them regardless of the actual aims of your job. Much of work in life starts in this bottom left hand box. Successful people do not fear this box. They do not fear these tasks. They recognize their weaknesses. They admit their failures and identify an opportunity to learn. They accept that they need to learn. They reflect, practice, adjust, seek feedback on performance and adjust again. And hey presto, they get better at these tasks. So much so that they no longer appear in the loathed bottom left hand box. They move across to the bottom right hand box. You are getting quite good at these tasks, but still you dislike them. Your memories of past failures still haunt you somewhat, but actually you are getting better and better at these things. So you continue working away, improving as a consequence, and then one day, as a result of your new learned competence, you find success. Your boss pats you on the back. Excuse me one minute, technical hitch. And says, good work, fine effort, a job well done. 
Wouldn't it be great if all our working lives could always be in the top right hand box? The things you love, the tasks you are good at, just being great on a daily basis. Life, sadly, just ain't like that. Now back to your recent past. Over the last year, two, three, you will have been in that cursed place. That unit you hated. I don't want to bring back bad memories here. That presentation you feared. That assignment you despised. That dissertation. And the very fact you're sitting here today is testament to your victory over those tasks in that rotten bottom left-hand box. Good for you. You did it. You rolled your sleeves up and you got the job done. And your future success will depend on you repeating that victory. That's the bit we have. It gives a natural break for the next part, you see. Berry College's mission is to serve the community through education and training. Throughout the year, the college recognises and supports individuals and organisations who contribute towards this mission. This year, I am delighted to be able to present the Berry College Honorary Award to someone from our local community whom the college believes has made a real difference to the lives of others. This individual has displayed a significant commitment to the community with her enduring charity and awareness raising work. The Joshua Wilson Brain Tumour Charity, Super Josh, was set up by 13 year old Joshua Wilson and his mum, Dawn Fiddler, in 2013 after their own 10 year journey through ill health. To help and support other affected families before Josh, sadly, passed away a year later. Since his passing, Dawn and Josh's other family friends have maintained their commitment to his charity and continue to help children, young people and their families in his legacy. It is an amazing journey and to date the charity has raised over £900,000 and has helped over 1,900 families. Please welcome to the stage CEO and founder of Super Josh, Mrs. Dawn Fiddler, Josh's mum. Just going to take my glasses off because the lights are bright. This is such an amazing honour. I am um, so I'm just totally overwhelmed. And I'm so proud to be here to witness all your achievements and to be able to congratulate you on all the hard work and everything that you've done to graduate. I'm so, so proud to be a part of it. And to be, when I was told that I was being given this award, well, I just kind of burst into tears. I'm so proud. <clears throat> but it's not for me, it's for me my family and um, an amazing team of volunteers. Um, like Charlie just said, um, basically my, my Josh was diagnosed with a brain tumour when he was three and a half and they gave him six weeks to live and um, we started a massive journey raising money for house adaptations, um, months and months and months in hospital it was just, but also it's really important to say that we had some amazing times and quite a lot of fun as well. Um, it wasn't a, a sad journey. We knew we only had limited time with Josh. Um, the fact that we, um, well, he um, survived till he was 14 after being given six weeks is just amazing. So we're just really grateful that we had all that time with him. Obviously, I miss my boy every day, but his legacy is amazing and we help all over we're a national charity but 80 percent of our work is in the northwest and of course if someone was diagnosed with a brain tumor in berry we'd love to help them first obviously because uh, berry's always been um, we're from berry it's always been a massive part of um the charity so we help with financial um grants we help with emotional support and counseling 
we help with house adaptations, pieces of equipment, all different kinds of things. And um, the majority, we do get a lot of requests from Joe Public, or, um, friends and family, when people hear about a child that's been diagnosed. But majority of our um, requests now come from the um, teams at um, the hospitals in the northwest. So we also do a lot of work with the um, children's wards and su supply them with equipment and things. It's just um, it's amazing, and um, yeah, we've nearly raised a million pounds, which is an incredible legacy. And um, just to correct, sorry, <laughs> we've we've uh, now helped over two thousand six hundred families. Um, so. Yeah, we, um, very, Josh would want me to tell you this, so not only is today a massive honour, but we, uh, a couple of years ago, we got awarded an MBE from the Queen for our voluntary work, which was absolutely incredible um, honour, and um, the best way to thank everyone that helps us help our families. And we make sure we have a lot of fun at the same time. And um, I just want to say a, a special thank you to everybody involved. They've literally treated me like a princess yesterday and today so far. And it's, um, it's just such an honour. And I, I'm so proud of you guys. It's, um, yeah. So thank you so much. And um, thank you. Thank you, Dawn. We are also honoured today to be joined by a Deputy Mayor of Bury. Oh, sorry, I've got this wrong, people. I need to present. I'll get to that bit in a minute. You kind of know what's coming now, don't you? <laughs> Thank you, Dawn. We are also honoured today to be joined by the Deputy Mayor of Bury, Councillor Shahina Haroon, who would like to address the audience. Thank you very much for inviting me to say a few words. I am delighted to be here as a Deputy Mayor of Barrie. Also, I would like to congratulate of, uh, all of you for your achievement. I'm very pleased and proud of Barrie College. Well done, carry on good work for the Barrie College staff and principal and wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. We are further honoured today to be joined by esteemed colleagues from the University of Cumbria, both in our platform party and as our guests. I am delighted to welcome Professor Brian Webster Henderson, Deputy Vice-Chancellor from the University of Cumbria, to deliver their keynote address. Uh, thank you to College Principal Charlie Dean for inviting me this morning. I'm actually really delighted to be here. Um, it's been a while since I've last been to a Bury graduation. It was 2019, and certainly a lot has happened since then. As Charlie said, I'm, I'm Brian. I'm a professor of nursing by background. I've spent my whole career either working in the NHS, 
educating carers or doing research into how to deliver care um, better. But one aspect of my remit at the University of Cumbria includes executive oversight of the University's Institute of Health, within which our BA honours working with children and families provision resides. I'm really therefore delighted to see so many students graduating with our award this morning. The university has a great strength in its health provision, and now more than ever, the learning and skills that you've gained during your studies will be in great demand. Many of you will already know that your next steps, others may be less certain, but as graduates of the BA working with children and families, there's a breadth of opportunities in our society for you, whether that be in early years education, in health and social care, in youth and community work, in many other fields. Working across the education and health sectors will provide a wealth of valuable and rewarding jobs and employability opportunities. One of the areas of growth which has been further highlighted by this global pandemic is that of health and social care. And in that, there'll be many opportunities for working differently, developing roles in our society which may not currently exist or be thought of or designed, thinking outside the box as we provide care and services for the young, the vulnerable, the areas of society will no doubt see greater demand. However, there is much more to learning than seeking a career, however important that is. Studying is a time to enjoy the learning experience itself and to recognise and reflect on the changes that learning brings to you as an individual. I was 17 when I left school to become a mental health nurse. It wasn't a degree at that time, but was certainly a time where I not only gained new knowledge, uh, but also gained core insight through my learning about me, my skills of communication, my responses to life's challenges, and my vision to work in care to the highest level that I could possibly achieve. In addition, you now have the ability to con continue your studies if you wish, and we'd certainly be happy to see you on one of our postgraduate degrees, should that be something you wish to do in the future. I know there are also graduates across a number of other programmes here today, international tourism management, early years, teaching assistance, healthcare, animal management and engineering. And Charlie spoke earlier about Burry College's mission to serve the community through education and training in whatever you do. You will be continuing in that tradition. These types of speeches, we'd normally talk about graduate skills, resilience, and how hard you have worked to achieve your success. For you today, that is certainly the case, and I feel very proud to be standing here uh, saying congratulations to all of you. As with the University of Cumbria, Burry College and your lecturers took steps to manage academic provision and your learning experience during periods of lockdown and restrictions. And ladies and gentlemen, I do commend all the staff of the college to you this morning for their hard work, their dedication, their commitment and perseverance at this time. Please give them a round of applause. As higher education institutions, we learned about a lot about remote learning, approaches to pedagogy and juggling all the challenges that lockdown brought. We intend to retain elements of this learning to enhance future delivery going forward. However, it was you, it was you who had to do it, managing homeschooling, anxieties around job security and furlough, caring responsibilities, general uncertainties caused by the pandemic. You have had to manage these and more whilst continuing to study remotely. That is a significant achievement to you all. It may not have been the period of study you envisaged when you started here, um, but you can all be confident and stand tall in the knowledge that you have achieved the skills you've developed and your strength and ability to adapt and to tackle challenges as they arise. On behalf of the University of Cumbria, I really do wish you all the best wishes for the next steps in whatever you choose to do. Thank you very much.
I would now like to introduce Jackie Taylor, Curriculum Director of Creative and Service Industries, Business and Professional, who will announce the names of the graduates from her area. Okay, firstly, I would like to announce Okay, firstly, I would like to announce one of the graduates of the FDA Healthcare. Her name is Courtney MacDonald. I will now announce the names of the graduates of the BSc Honours International Tourism Management. And this one is Sasha Main. <laughs> Haram Hossein. <laughs> Chloe Horan. Tiffany Hindley. Well <laughs> Julia Labika. <laughs> Megan Gallagher. Aaron Bishop. <laughs> Abigail Bertels. <laughs> Iqbal Maya. Chelsea Hilling Georgie Timson Chloe Wood Luana Andrade <laughs> Lucy Alt <laughs> Rachel Blunt Fern Briggs. <laughs> Callum Buchanan. <laughs> Sh 
Charlotte Burberry. Rebecca Hannaby Williams. Danielle Mile. Bethany Rigby. Noemi Virag. Okay, I would now like to introduce Lisa Matthews, Curriculum Director of Adult Provision and Higher Education, who will announce the names of the graduates from her area. I will now announce the names of the graduates of the BA with Honours working with children and families. Vanessa Rowland. Bay. Akisha Nelson. Jody Parkinson. Nicole Plum. <laughs> Jalita Seaton. <laughs> Ricky Sutcliffe. Sutcliffe. <laughs> Bethany Lee. Shannon Mackin. <laughs> Rachel McFarlane. Sarah Monaghan. <laughs> Laura Pumo. <laughs> Faye Rowley. Terry Leanne Smith. <laughs> J. 
Julie Taylor Moore. Georgina Unsworth. Angela Wright. I will now announce the names of the graduates of the Foundation Degree in Early Years. Sarah Hamadi. Amy Ashworth. Emma Best. <laughs> Kerry Foster. <laughs> Stephanie Haslam. <laughs> Laura Hewitt. Kirsty Morris <laughs> Joss Salmon I will now announce the names of the graduates from the Foundation Degree Teaching Assistants. Claire Horrocks. <laughs> Leanne Smith. I will now announce the graduates of the Foundation Degree in Healthcare. Ellie Harper. <laughs> Tess Redmond. <laughs> Shifa Ahmed. Anna Frey. <laughs> Vimbe Monungo. <laughs> I would now like to introduce Vernon Shaw. Curriculum Director of Construction and Technologies, who will announce the names of the graduates in his area. I will now announce the names of the graduates of the HND Animal Management. Carly Lenahan.
Georgia Thieu. <laughs> Hannah Toyne. I will now announce the names of the graduates of the HNC Engineering. Sahail Hussein. <laughs> Craig Mappard Zamombi. Zishan Sawar. <laughs> Daniel Dunn. <laughs> Rashid Mahmood. Jack Williams. And finally, Matthew Ward. <laughs> I would now like to welcome back Professor Brian Webster Henderson Deputy Vice-Chancellor, Health, Environment and Innovation of the University of Cumbria, who will confer the graduates. By virtue of the authority of my office as Deputy Vice-Chancellor, and on behalf of the University and University Centre, I admit you and those listed in the programme who are in absentia to those degrees, diplomas and award for which you have been presented here today. Our warmest congratulations to you all. That applause is well deserved, everyone. Congratulations. Um, I would now like to welcome back Lisa Matthews, Director of Adult Provision and Higher Education at Bury College, who will officially close the ceremony. Thank you. Congratulations, graduates. You've done it. Now that you officially have your qualifications, your scrolls, I would ask that you put them to very good use. Use them as a constant reminder of just what can be achieved with hard work, commitment and determination. Use them to gain employment, secure promotion or to change your career. Use them to further your education still to become even more expert in your subject areas and who knows, perhaps go on to teach others. Use them as a source of inspiration and motivation, not only for yourselves, but your family and your friends. Yes, your qualifications are an award, a certificate, but they are so much more than that. 
They are testament to personal development and growth. We are all incredibly proud of your achievements. And I see that many of you have friends, families, tutors and other guests here today. And I know that their help, support, encouragement have helped many of you throughout your period of study. So, in recognition of their help and support, can I ask all our graduates to stand for a moment, please? To turn and face our guests. And wait for it. On the count of three, please can you give them a generous applause of thanks. One. <laughs> One, two, three. Thank you, graduates. If you could just remain standing, please, and if I could please ask that all of our guests be upstanding too. The platform party will now depart, but once again, everyone, sincere congratulations on all of your achievements. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing and applaud your graduates. Please can all graduates make their way down the stairs and out of the building for your official hat throwing picture. Guests. Please make your way to the bar area for refreshments and await your graduates. Thank you.